In this video, we'll be going over Pascal's triangle too. So give an integer row index. Return the row index row of the Pascal triangle. Notice that the row index starts from zero. So in this Pascal triangle, we have initially have a list of, of the value of one. Then for each additional row, we have a one in the front and one at the end at each of the rows. And then the elements in the middle is the sum of the pairs from the previous row. So for, ex for example, we have a two here, which is the sum of one and one. And we have three here is the sum of one and two, and we have another three here, which is the sum of two and one. So let's go over the thought process. We will initially have a list of value, a list which only contains the value of one, which is our initial list. Then for each of the new rows, we will first need to have a value of one at the end of the, at the front of the list and also at the end of the list. This is to indicate these values. And then to find the elements in the middle, in the middle of the list, we will need to find the sum of pairs of elements from the previous row. So let's go over a pseudocode. So we're gonna create, create a list results or we can we can just say previous which will initially have a value of one that this is for base case so this base case then we're going to iterate through from one to one to the row index row index so we're going to denote it as r we start as we start from one because our previous is already the zero row because our row index starts from zero, so the previous is already represented by this. So we're going to start from these downward. So we're going to create a list current to keep track of the values at the current row. We're going to append or we're going to add one to current. That's our initial value. So we're going to add one to current, and I'm going to iterate through the indices of the previous row from one to size of previous row denoted as i and then we're going to find the sum of the pairs so add prev.get i minus one plus prev.get i to current and after we add all of the add all of the sum of the pairs we're going to add in our last one to each of the rows so we're going to add one to current. Now we're going to set prev to current. We're basically moving down the rows. And then we're going to return previous, which is the elements in the last row. So let's go over to time and space complexity. So the time complexity is going to be of n times n plus 1 divided by 2, which is equal to of n squared where n is the input value. This is all of the cells that we have generated because we gotta go through each of the cells. For example, if the row index, the input value is equal to two, if the input value is equal to two, then we have to generate three cells. So basically one, two, three here. And then if we try to calculate that is two times 2 plus 1 divided by 2, which we will get 2 times 3 divided by 2, which we will which we will get 3. So we get 3. And this will also work for the other rows too. Now our space complexity is go to of n, where n is the input value. This is because the largest list that we generate is equal to the row index. For example, if the in row index is two, then our, the longest list we have ever generated is one and one. If it's three, we get one, two, three. If it's four, one, two, three, four. So we're gonna say um, this is the resulting list. Now let's go over the code. So we're gonna say previous. Let's go to the new array list, and then previous.add 
the initial value of 1 and I'm going to iterate through the rows then we're going to create a list for the current row and then add our initial 1 to it and we're going to find the sum of the pairs from the previous row current that has some of the pairs then we're gonna append and add another value add another one to the current row and then we'll set previous to current and then we'll return previous let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below